everyone! Today's palette review will be on the Violet Voss Sugar Crystals palette. This review will of course have my thoughts on all the shadows, five different eye looks, as well as swatches. Starting off, let's talk a little bit about the packaging on the Sugar Crystals palette. This is made entirely out of cardboard and it is quite slim. It's not as slim as some of the other cardboard packaging palettes that I have seen on the market, but it is pretty small. I know some people do prefer plastic, but for me, cardboard is where it's at, so I'm very happy that this is made out of cardboard. So if your beautiful Sugar Crystals logo on the outside, and then when you open it up, you of course have your shadows on the inside, and then you've got a mirror here which is large, but I would not say the most functional one all the time. I do prefer something that's a little bit bigger, which is to say I would like it to be the entire size of the palette. But the overall look of it is quite neat because it kind of just has that sort of pastel rainbow that it's sitting within. One of my favorite features about this palette is the fact that all of the shade names are on the inside of the palette. I appreciate that so much because I can't stand when they're on like the back or only on the box. So I really appreciate the fact that they're on the inside. They are also printed on the back, which is handy as well. So the price of this palette is 55 Canadian or 42 US and you are getting 18 different shadows in here and they're each 1.8 grams each. At least that's the math I kind of get out of it because if you look at the back of the packaging, it says the net weight is 32.4 grams. So if you average it out, they're about 1.8 grams each. Now there are a few strange things about this palette. And the first one is that I can't find where this palette was made. Usually on the back of a palette, or at the very least on the back of the box, it will say that the palette was made in the US or in Canada or in China. Nowhere that I have found does it say where this palette was made. It's not on the palette here, it's not on the box, and I keep figuring that I'm just not seeing it, but I've read these things over and over and I cannot locate where it was produced. It does say it was distributed by Violet Voss Cosmetics, Orange County, CA, but that does not mean that it was made in the USA. Now the other strange thing about this palette is that it is not that accessible in Canada and I still can't figure out why. So this has been available since I think the end of February in the US through both Violet Voss's website and Sephora stores as well as online. This only recently came into stock at Sephora Canada, but only in stores. You cannot buy this palette online through Sephora Canada. It always says coming soon and I eventually did find it in stores much to my shock because I did not think that they were going to have it physically in a retail location but some locations will have these palettes out. So that's something to keep in mind if you've been waiting for this thing to come in stock on Sephora Canada don't wait any longer. Go to your local Sephora store and look for it there. I could obviously buy this palette through the Violet Voss website, but as a Canadian, I am very leery about buying products from the US and have them shipped across the border because more often than not, I get drilled with customs and I'm not really into that. All right, we've covered over everything I wanted to discuss about the palette itself, so let me slide in some swatches now so you can see exactly how these look like swatched out on my arm. Alright, now that you've seen the swatches, let's talk a little bit about the shadows that are in this palette. I am so excited by this thing. When I first saw it previewed back in February, I just couldn't wait to get my hands on it, and it took a while, but now that I have it, I am just filled with so much excitement over this thing because it's a rainbow palette, but it has a little bit of a different twist to it. So what you're getting with this is a full matte row up top. You don't have a red, but you do have a really hot pink. The second row down here is like a shimmery version of the top row, and some of them are a little bit duochrome. And then the bottom row, you're getting a very, I would call them an ivory shifting duochrome color that matches the column that they're in. And because of the way that this palette is structured, this becomes immediately one of those easy to create eye looks. You can take any column and create a complete eye look with it. All you need to do is chuck this color whichever one you want on the middle of your lid, grab the top row color, 
put that on the outer corner and drag that through your crease and then put one of these colors down here on the inner corner. And you can do that with pink, orange, yellow, green, like it just goes on and on and that makes this one of the easiest colorful palettes to use. I know a lot of people can struggle with how to apply colorful eyeshadow to their eyes and this one basically makes it foolproof for you because it's already broken down into those color families. Now of course not everybody is going to stick to one column and just do that over and over again so I do find that the colors mix and match very well but if you're somebody who just wants an easy to do colorful eyeshadow look and you just want to change colors all the time this is a great palette for you. My favorite colors in here definitely ended up being this row of um, I would say mid-tone shimmery colors. They are so so smooth. They apply incredibly pigmented and buttery and the shift on some of them is absolutely wild. This orange cream over here is a beautiful orange shifting gold. That one is oh, it's so, so pretty. Grape over here, which is what I'm wearing on my lid today, is a purple lavender with a slightly blue cast to it. Another gorgeous shade. And then sweet and sour, I honestly think that was the most unique color in this entire palette. It wasn't the shade I was really expecting for the blue column because it's got a lot of green in it, but it makes it so much more fun to play with because you can pair it with the blue or the green or sometimes even the purple to pull out different tones in that shadow. The bottom row of colors are excellent for inner corner highlights and that's usually how I tended to play with them. They'd work just fine on the lid as well, but for me I really like an inner corner highlight that's going to have a little bit of a shifting color to it. They would also make excellent face highlighters as well. If you're looking for something to just put on your cheekbone, these would work out really well. The only color I felt that wasn't really the same kind of formula as the rest of the shadows was, funnily enough, Sugar Crystals, which, you know, is the name of the palette. And that one is a beautiful color, but it is really flaky. So it kind of creates a little bit of a mess, both in the pan and on your face when you're using it. It looks quite blue actually in the viewfinder now that I'm looking at it, but it does have a little bit of a lavender cast to it. It's a pretty color, but it is definitely different than the rest of the palette. I don't know why this one isn't as smooth as the rest of them, but there you have it. And lastly, the mattes on the top row are really exciting to me, although I was initially worried that they weren't going to be deep enough to use with the rest of the colors because the palette overall is very bright. It doesn't have a ton of depth and I was worried that putting one of these matte colors in my outer corner wasn't going to be deep enough for my taste. Now recently I've started to appreciate a brighter outer corner which isn't something that I've always done, but I've started to get into it and I think this palette has helped me out a little bit in that respect. So you will find that if you're doing a look with only this palette, it does end up being quite bright. And as somebody with hooded eyes, I tend to prefer something like I've got on today that's deeper in the outer corner. So it looks like I've got a little bit more of a visible crease, even though I don't really. Um, so you can kind of mix and match the colors in here to create some depth specifically with the blue and the purple just because they are deeper tones but if you're using the other colors um, as your outer corner color you will find that this is a brighter look overall. I got plenty of looks out of this palette just using it by itself but I think in the future when I'm not creating a video for YouTube I will grab for this palette but use it with other palettes as well just because I want I want a deeper orange for example. I want maybe a little bit of a red to go with this um, area over here and I do want a deeper green to use as well. Don't get me wrong, I love the way that this palette has come together and I have used it many times on its own and been really happy with the results. But for me, I think I will be incorporating other palettes as I move forward with it. Overall, the shimmers are definitely the best formula in this palette with the mattes being secondary to them. The mattes are very nice though and what I did like about them is that some of them you can actually use a really fluffy brush and get a very soft edge and then you can go in with a harder brush and then get a deeper color to it which really worked out in my favor because in today's look I have the blue kind of layered on my eyes twice. I've got it once through the top of my crease with a very fluffy brush and that created a soft hue and then when I wanted to create a little bit of a deeper blue so that I had a bit more of a gradient I just used a stiffer brush and used the blue in the middle of my crease and it worked out really well. I do feel like the variety in here is very good. I mean it is a rainbow so you are getting that full spectrum but the tones between the mattes, the deeper shimmers and then the lighter shimmers is pretty good except for one of them. I did feel like Lemon Drop and Buttercream just come across on the eyes way too similarly. It's basically the same shade. So 
I don't really know what they could have done. Maybe made this one a little bit paler or made this one a little bit deeper. I mean, they're both still fun to play with, but they are very, very similar on the eyes. I'd also really like to point out about just how easy it was to blend the mattes in this palette because they're not actually neon shades. And neon pigment does have that kind of patchiness issue. And I was worried that these were going to kind of suffer from that but they're not true neons. They look really bright in this palette, verging on neon, but they're not truly neon. And while they will go on incredibly vibrantly, they're not difficult to blend. Okay, that's enough about the shadows. So let's take a look at the five eye looks that I created using this palette. The first look uses a banana through the crease. I really like this weird yellow color. It's not as pale as I was expecting. It's actually got a little bit of an orange tinge to it, which is kind of nice. I have buttercream on the inner corner of my eye, and then I have lemon drop on the inner third of the lid. This is where I kind of realized that buttercream and lemon drop really just don't look that different on the eyes. I have orange cream on the middle third of the lid. Orange cream ended up blended a little bit too much on top of lemon drop, which I think kind of diluted the color a little bit. I should have put orange cream on first and then applied lemon drop second. I do really like orange cream, but I think in this look it just, it's not as vibrant as it should have looked. I also have pear berry on the outer third of the lid and drag that through my crease. Look number two was a lot of fun to do. I used jelly bean through the crease. First I used it with a really fluffy brush to make it really blow out the color and not look too strong. And then I used a stiffer brush to really pull jelly bean through the crease and make it look a little bit deeper. I then have sweet and sour on the lid. Love that color so much. It is such a strong pigmented color. I adore it. And then I have limeade on the inner corner of the eye. So with look number three, I decided to do exactly what I'd mentioned before and create an easy gradient eye look using only one column. So I stuck to the pink uh, reddish column and I have bubble gum through the crease here. I put strawberry on the lid and then I put cotton candy on the inner corner. And this look is one that you can replicate with each color family in here. You can do this with the pink as I'm now showing you, the orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, or the purple. Just put the colors in in that exact order and you'll come up with a beautiful eye look. Wow, I didn't realize how many cool toned eyeshadow looks I created with this palette. I definitely stuck more to the purples and blues, that's for sure. So look number four uses mint choco on the inner third of the lid. I wanted to do an all matte eyeshadow look with this one just to see how they work together. I put blue raz on the middle third of the lid and then I have jelly bean on the outer third of the lid and pull that through the crease. I also have limeade on the inner corner of the eye as well. For today's look, I definitely stuck with the more cooler toned colors yet again. I started off with blue raz on a fluffy brush and put that through my crease. I wanted it to blend out softly because there's really no transition color in this palette. I then used blue raz again on a stiffer brush and pulled that through my crease to really amp up the color of that area. On my lid, I put grape, that beautiful purple violet blue duochrome. It is stunning. And then I put a jelly bean on the outer corner of my eye and dragged that through my crease, melding it with blue raz. Between those two shades, blue raz and jelly bean, I got a bit of an indigo color, which is really gorgeous, I think. For my lower lash line, I put grape on the inner half of the eye, and then I used jelly bean on the outer half and sort of dragged that up towards my uh, upper lid. And then I put sugar crystals on the inner corner of my eye, and even though it's a blue duochrome essentially, you can kind of see how the purple tones in this color pull out a little bit more when it's paired beside grape. This is actually the second time that I've created this eye look. I initially made it for work one day and I liked it so much that I decided I'd recreate it for this video. So I hope you like this look as much as I do. All right, to wrap up my Violet Voss Sugar Crystals palette, I adore this thing. It's a different take on a rainbow palette and that's made me really excited. I already know I like matte rainbow colors, but when it came to seeing these uh, other two rows, the medium shimmer and then the very pale shimmer rows, with those matte colors, I, it just fills me with excitement. I think it's such a fun, fun palette. I am just confused about why it's so difficult to get in Canada. I don't know why it's not on Sephora's website, and I wish it was because then more people would have access to it. I highly recommend this palette. I hope if you're interested in it, you do pick it up because it was wonderful to play with. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you found it helpful and I will see you next time. Bye.